More than 50,000 migratory birds converge from across the world in this single habitat. With an estimated 378 species of birds inhabiting the floodplain, this area serves as an important global bird's nest. The wetland lies within the 147 840 square kilometers area Kumaduguyobe catchment, a tributary of the Lake Chad. It covers 320 square kilometers in the eastern boundaries of Jigawa State with Bochi and Yobe states in Nigeria. Enriched with diverse flora and fauna, the plain consists of three broad vegetations in a limited area. The scrub savanna consists in upland farmland and acacia woodlands. The swampy flood vegetation with the seasonally flooded marshes and fadama being characterized by acacia and dwarf farm and the Sudan savanna vegetation with isolated tall trees and sparse shrubs. The wetland area experienced annual flood the magnitude of which varies year by year, depending on the intensity of rainfall. River Sadeja and Kaffenhausen feed the plain with seasonal rainwater. The flood water empties into more than 100 ponds that stir it up to the dry season. Some of the ponds have the capacity of holding its waters throughout the dry season period. This gives source of nourishment and a safe haven for birds and other aquatic animals. The woodlands receive sustenance from the Fadama moisture throughout the year. This serves as hiding nests for thousands of migratory birds from parts of Africa and Middle East. This is home to thousands of migratory birds that come from different continents of the world. Europe. Asia, America, and even from African countries. Thousands of migratory birds converge here. Some say they come for a yearly retreat, while others say they come due to harsh weather conditions in their areas. But whatever the case may be, why here? A question that I cannot get even the birds to answer. The bird's selection of their chosen destination has been a source of wonder for many. Interesting facts have surfaced over the years, but there is still an element of mystery. Scientists believe that migrating birds use an internal compass to fly between their wintering grounds and their nesting areas, much as compass that humans use. This internal compass was thought to be strongly influenced by the Earth's magnetic field. This part of the world may be an ancestral nesting place of the birds. People living around the area confirm the birds have lived in the wetland for years. Waterfowls are the dominant fauna in this area. They include pelican, yellow-billed stuck, north-billed goose, African grey hornbill, white-faced whistling duck and gagany. The movements of birds vary year in year out. 
Annual census figures indicate rise and fall in the records. The migratory birds are mostly identified by silver rings around their legs. The rings bear the type of bird, its serial number and country of origin. Some of the known seasonal birds that frequent this area come from some African countries. Shamo, which is an Ethiopian stock, is believed to hold glad tidings for rainfall. It annually arrives the area in the month of August, which is the beginning of the rainy season. The migratory birds from Europe, America and some Asian countries reach the wetland during the winter period. The estuary harbors different species of migratory birds throughout the year. Some stay for a period of four months, while some stay throughout the year. More than 100 water bodies that spread across this wetland give the birds alternative for cover in case of threats. They move easily between ponds that are more conducive for their living. Tukunzuru harbors a higher population of white-faced whistling duck. The fresh water with little aquatic weeds gives the birds more room to swim around. Water lilies provide the birds further protection and hiding cover. Beside the fresh water of Tukunzuru Pond, many other ponds in the wetland keep a greater number of birds. Some of the ponds include Demasa, Kadodo, Tuzuru, Kwasabar, Kiburu, Kabe Wuriwa, Kandamau, and Jijim, to mention but few out of the 100 ponds that make Baturia. Some of the ponds are consumed by aquatic weeds. This makes living more difficult for some of the birds, leaving them with a small portion of the water to dwell. The weeds force away many of the birds from their original nesting areas. This has drastically reduced the number of the migratory birds coming into the area. The reserve supports about 1% of Nigeria's inland freshwater fisheries. It is home to the Clypea fish species that represents 20% of the fish variety in the Lake Chad Basin. Abundance of fish varieties attracts the mighty and smaller birds that feed on fish. Pelicans, comorots, eaglefish eater, blue heron, brown heron, white heron and the black heron all feed on fish. The comorot can dive underneath the ponds and remain in waters for 30 minutes or more in search of fish. It normally lives around deep water. Black heron, otherwise known as black aigrette, lives on the edges of freshwater lakes and ponds. It has an interesting hunting method known as canopy feeding. It uses its wings like an umbrella to attract smaller fish. It feeds on the smaller fish going into the shed it makes. The aquatic birds have ways of adaptation in the waters. They usually lubricate their feathers to serve as water resistance. The preening gland at the base of the tail secretes an oil which the bird spread with its beak on its feathers and claws. Lubrication of feathers decreases wear and enables bird to fly even after swimming. Beside the swamp vegetation that holds aquatic birds and animals, the upland vegetation and the Sudan savanna supports other species of birds that live on forest trees. The African hornbill is a dominant species in the upland. Other non aquatic birds in this vegetation include cotton blue, dub blue spotted, eaglefish eater, eastern grey plantain eater, red bill five flinch, stalling and the weaver ruffles. The hoopoe, otherwise known in Arabic as hood hood, was Prophet Solomon Bird Messenger mentioned in Quran chapter 27 verse 20. Related to the hornbill, it shares the same habitat in the upland of Baturia.